Good morning, students. Today, we are going to talk about a very interesting but a long topic. Peritoneum, peritoneal folds and recesses. This in our curriculum based medical education, it is covered under the competencies in 47.1 to 47.4. So if you see, we need to discuss about the peritoneum especially the recesses of the peritoneum. You can see that it's lesser and greater sac. The lesser and greater sac than a, okay, it's very, very small, just two sacs. Is that what comes into the mind of the students? But then to understand those two sacs, we need to go through a lot of the tracings of the peritoneum, so which we will be covering in today's topic. So in the course of the topic, we will also be able to identify the various peritoneal folds and the pouches and why, how they form and how they contribute to the formation of the sacs. And of course, the purpose of studying all these things is to ensure that we are able to apply in our clinical aspects and that the clinical aspects are the ascites and the peritonitis and subphrenic abscess. So all those things we will be covering in today's class. What is peritoneum? Now it is a serous membrane which lines the abdominal cavity and reflected over the viscera. Students, I would like to emphasize on the two terms, lining and reflected. Lining is something which is in the inner surface of anything. You all would have come across this in your clothing lining of your suit, lining of your tops, lining of the blouses. But then the other term is reflected over the viscera, that is a covering. Cover is something over the external surface. Lining is something over the internal surface. So this is a serous membrane which lines the inner surface of the abdominal cavity but covers the outer surface of the viscera and this continuity is what we want to discuss today. The peritoneum is a serous membrane which has two layers. The layer that lines is called as a mesothelium. Now mesothelium again you would have come across this term related term students whenever there is a lining squamous epithelium you heard about that squamous epithelium which is one of the basic epithelial uh, cell. Now that epithelium when it lines the peritoneum it is called as mesothelium because the term peritoneum is coined it comes from meso. Meso because peritoneum is a derivative of the mesoderm layer of the germinal layer. So because it is a derivative of mesoderm it is given the term meso and the lining epithelium, squamous epithelium, which lines this part of the membrane is called as mesothelium. Uh, at this juncture, I would like you to take the point where else we have come across a different term used for the same lining squamous epithelium. You will remember that the cells, the squamous epithelial cells that line the blood vessels, the inner lining of the blood vessels is called as endothelium because endo means inner. So it's the same squamous epithelium but when it lines the blood vessels it's called as endothelium. When it lines the peritoneum it is called as mesothelium. And the mesothelium is a cellular layer. That's because the peritoneum uh, has secretes some fluid, peritoneal fluid and that secretion is because of these cells. It is, but these cells by itself will not be able to sustain the friction and the hardship. So it has to have a underlying connective tissue. We call that as sub-epithelial or sub-mesothelial connective tissue. And that sub-mesothelial connective tissue underlying this mesothelium gives it support and helps in maintaining the integrity. Not only that, the function of the peritoneum has a lot of bearing on this mesothelium and its connective tissue. The mesothelium cells, though normally they secrete the peritoneal fluid in abnormal conditions, especially when they come across some infection, some inflammation, they can 
change into a fibroblast. So, fibroblast you know it is a type of connective tissue cell. So, when it changes to a fibroblast in that area then the scarring happens. So, later in the slides uh, towards the end of our presentation we will when we discuss about the clinical anatomy we will come across the term adhesions, peritoneal adhesions whenever somebody undergoes some surgery you know post operative the patient complains of pain and the surgeon will say uh, that will be there, there will be some adhesions. So, that can cause the pain that is what the surgeons will say and that adhesion is the attachment of the two layers of peritoneum in those areas of surgery and that adhesion is because of this fibroblast which again are from the mesothelium. Not only the fibroblasts are from the mesothelium, I told you about the sub mesothelial connective tissue. That connective tissue also has macrophages, fibroblasts and even in some places adipocytes. Adipocytes are fat cells. Why macrophages? That is again a very important function of peritoneum. It can help in controlling the infection. How? Because of the presence of the macrophages in the sub mesothelial connective tissue. Now, the peritoneum we the, the microscopic, uh, no, to, the, so far we were discussing the two microscopic layers. Now I want to discuss about the macroscopic two layers of peritoneum, which is seen in gross eye examination, a parietal layer and a visceral layer. Here is where I want to bring your attention to the terms which I started with, lining and reflected. 